Monitor companies are getting real feisty. Microsoft looks like they're gonna be able to complete this Activision Blizzard acquisition, and Amazon is getting into the PC building game. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, March 3rd, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about a little spat, a little tiff that LG appears to be throwing Samsung's way when it comes to the OLED displays that are actually being incorporated on both their TVs as well as gaming monitors. This was part of a phone call that LG had where they were talking about everything great about themselves and then decided to just say, hey, did you know that Samsung's QD OLEDs are worse than ours when it comes to burn in and actually having screen retention on the displays because of several different technical issues that LG has gone with versus what Samsung has gone with to build out their panels. They were quoting third party sites like Artings and other ones in order to just demonstrate the fact that you can trust LG when it comes to being your OLED provider because they will have significantly less burn-in on the G2 and C2 being their proof examples versus what Samsung has out there. And LG is claiming this is because of how they've actually built out their panels because they use a white subpixel instead of Samsung's using pure RGB subpixels with their quantum dot layer, even though Samsung might be able to get brighter because they don't actually use the same technology that LG does, they're more susceptible to burn-in and you shouldn't trust them for that reason. So I wanna pitch this out to you, especially for people who either have OLED TVs or now as they're starting to roll out the OLED gaming monitors, the QD OLEDs that Samsung's been putting out in the ultra wide and now hopefully soon in the regular traditional gaming panels. Have you seen this? If you've had both, which one has been worse for you? Have you experienced burn in on your OLED panels? Do you know of people who have them? Just, I wanna hear your personal stories on OLED burn in when it comes to your panels and your displays down below in the comments. For my personal take on this, I have an OLED TV, and then recently we've done a UFD tech video on the LG OLED gaming monitor, and I haven't had them long enough to actually test any sort of burn in, so my opinion is kind of irrelevant here. I haven't seen anything to display these problems, so I just, I'm curious on the personal experience, LG versus Samsung, what's your pitch and take on that. And the EU's take on the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition is that, hey, for $69 billion, it can go through. At least that's the current report that the EU is expected to approve this deal, especially with all of the make good efforts that Microsoft has been going through to guarantee things like COD games being on GeForce Now for the next decade, as well as other consoles and them really actively pushing to make sure that for at least a decade, nothing changes and that it's more available than it otherwise would have been. Does this excite you? You you want this? Let me know down below, but a specific Blizzard Blizzard game that people are excited for, Doblo 4 going into open beta sometime in June, but we're now getting details on the specifications of the PC that you're going to need in order to run it. So they are confirming that ray tracing will be coming to the game post launch. It's not gonna be there initially, but the minimum specs are actually quite gracious. You're gonna need an i5 2500K or an FX 8100 for the CPU, and then a GTX 1660 or an R9 280 for the GPU. And that'll be able to play it at 720p render resolution, low set, for 30 FPS. Recommended specs are gonna be an i5 4670K or Ryzen 3 1300X, and then for GPU, it's a 970 or an RX 470, which is actually pretty good for recommended and minimum specs. They have said that there's gonna be the ability to play the game on lower specifications than this, including integrated GPUs or anything less, dual core CPUs, etc. It's just that it's not gonna be a great experience, but it's even though it's gonna be a AAA game coming out in 2023, it's gonna be at least not too difficult to run. Hopefully AMD these APUs could even take a nice shot at it. But Microsoft also updating Windows 11 to finally get a good audio mixer. My gosh, has that been one of the most horrible things that I've experienced on just taking away a feature that worked on Windows 10 and not giving you anything equivalent on Windows 11, the ability to actually mix the audio on the operating system. You can see here, it's a simple design. I don't know why that wasn't there at launch, but they're finally bringing it in as well as a shortcut to access it. Windows Control V is gonna help to bring that up. I I've wanted this for so long. It's just, it's such a helpful thing. Windows, yes, please bring that. But it's also Valve updating the Steam Deck to be more supportive of video games. It's now officially across the 8,000 playable games list with about 3,000 of them being verified games, 2988. And then 5,032 of them are considered playable, which makes it so that they're past the 8,000 games mark, which is more than the PS3 and PS4 combined. Some new ones that have been added, Cyberpunk 2077 recently got verified, Atomic Heart also verified. and seems 
seems like the Steam Deck is getting ever more and more useful and popular. And that's what Reese hopefully is doing. Hey friends, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today we're starting off strong with the Acer Predator XP27 1HU. This 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz IPS display with G-Sync compatibility is going for only $229.99, which is $70 off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then secondly, we have this Lenovo IdeaPad 3. This laptop features a 15.6 inch 1080p TN display, a Ryzen 3 5425U, 8 gigs of DDR4 and a 256 gig hard drive for only $349.99, which is $220 off and the lowest price in 30 days. But those are the deals for today. You can find them and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. What a great deal update. And you, Tesla updating the world on what they're gonna be doing with their master plan part three, which was not as spicy as a lot of people were expecting. Elon Musk actually being in a very subdued tone for this investors day kind of laying out a very modest business oriented plan for what tesla plans to do to get ahead cost reductions vertical integrations changes in operational efficiency some cool stuff that they want to do 20 million evs a year is where they want to be by 2030 they want to be issuing heat pumps to transition the world to more sustainable fuel sources and making it so that it's better for the environment overall they're also going to start distributing energy in texas as part of their tesla electric energy retailing business where they're going to charge you $30 a month in order to get free nighttime charging for people who have power walls and are going to open up their energy in order to be used for this. We're already kind of seeing something like this in California with virtual power plants that has been going on. But some math that people have crunched on this is that based on the pricing of energy in Texas in certain regions for $30 a month, you're going to have to drive a lot of miles every single month in order to make that financially worth it for you. But it could be there. Additionally, some charging details like having a nice little diner style cash fade to charge out at certain superchargers and even a small tease towards having wireless charging for upcoming models of Tesla's. Speaking of, Elon Musk not really talking about any of their future models, their $25,000 models or anything that they're going to be developing in the future, but rather saying that they will have a proper product event, but will be jumping the gun if we're to answer your questions, which is just way more subdued than I've seen Elon Musk talk about his companies in a very long time. It could potentially be like the Cybertruck where they don't want to announce it well five years before they're even ready to launch it because somebody got a video of the new production version of the Cybertruck at Giga Texas. You can see it has a gigantic windshield wiper. It's got side view mirrors, which it wasn't originally supposed to have. And it also looks like just a more refined street ready version of the Cybertruck, which I think has actually ruined a little bit of the appeal for me. But let me know what you think of this new version of the Cybertruck, or if you can tell the difference. Let me know it down below in the comments. And will you be able to tell the difference between an Amazon Basics PC part and the PC part that you would have gotten from another manufacturer? Well, that's gonna be a reality we're gonna live in because Amazon Basics has its first PC component being listed on their website. A $27 RGB CPU cooler, which looks remarkably similar to something that Cooler Master put out, but coming in at a price that is actually really, really competitive. So it looks like it's based on the Master Hyper from Cooler Master. Master, you can see that right here. It's, this is roughly like a 60-ish dollar CPU cooler right now, $68 on Amazon, 66 on Newegg. And Amazon doesn't really go into a whole lot of specifications on what the CPU cooler can do and what it's gonna actually be capable of. But I'm just curious, would you buy an Amazon Basics PC part? Is this something that you want to enable? And it's hard to say whether or not they're getting like Cooler Master or another company to be the manufacturer for this and they're actually just white labeling it, or if this is something that they're gonna take over entirely and start just everything is going to be Amazon all of the time. You got that new Amazon gaming computer at home, kid? You playing on the Amazon? Let me know what you think about Amazon being into computer parts. want to hear from you down below in the comments. We'll have to see if this is just the start, a bad beginning to something that's inevitably going to fail, or, you know, just a mix of the two where it's just a few things that are available out there, but they're not really going to delve into like graphics cards and everything out there in the entire world. And I'm not going to delve into more hot news because we're done for the week. I'll see you back here on Monday for more of the hottest tech news out on the internet, my friends. Thank you.